The great American painter, Scott Noel, describes in rapturous terms his friend Frank Trefney's current show of still lives at the Gross McLeaf Gallery in Philadelphia. Scott writes, Still life has an ambiguous prestige in painting, ironically connected to the values of humility and moral gravity. Frank Trefney is a great still life painter. His paintings have been a dependable source of challenge and refreshment all the 20 odd years I've been looking at them. And this may be Frank's finest and most satisfying show yet. I couldn't agree more. Hi, my name is Frank Trefney. I'm a painter, a still life painter. Um, I went to school at Syracuse University, graduated in 1970, and then the Hofberger School of Painting at Maryland Institute. I got my master's degree in painting there in, in 1974. Well, I've always been interested in objects, and I've always enjoyed painting them, but in school, in my education, I was very interested in the figure. But I think somewhat out of convenience when I first had like a little studio to work in. I, it's a little harder to get models and uh, still life objects were readily available. So I did a number of still lifes. And then I found that I really liked those objects. So I continued with that. It's become the predominant motif in my work. Growing up, I lived in Greenwich, Connecticut, and we had beautiful beaches and islands offshore, so I was very interested in painting outside. So I do a lot of shore paintings. Usually the elements are very simple, uh, the horizon, the sky, simple grass and rocks, a beach, and I find that that can combine it rather nicely with a simple still life motif. Oftentimes it would be like a bouquet of flowers on a table. For me, it's like combining sort of both worlds. And it's a change from just the studio with it. I've you know, surrounded by objects, and a lot of times the, the compositions are very complex, not always, but sometimes in the studio and outdoors, it's uh, kind of a simplicity that I'm after. When I'm asked how I come up with my compositions or what, what objects I choose to use, it's a little hard to answer because it's a bit of a mystery every time and it's also a little bit of a dilemma. You don't want the arrangement to seem too arranged and at the same time you might have something in mind with the objects you're choosing. I've learned in fact to spend some time getting the arrangement to a place where I feel good about it. Not that uh, it can't be changed, it is oil paint after all so you can change all kinds of stuff and I, I often do make changes during the painting. I seem always to have flowers. I love flowers and they always provide a focal point or can provide a focal point. So that's generally part of the, of the arrangement. I also have a big garden, which is becoming more of a problem as I get older because it's just impossible to keep up with overgrown weedy quality at this point. So I just go with it. My neighbors, a number of them are gardeners as well. And uh, if I need to buy flowers, I buy flowers. But uh, usually during the growing season, there's something right in my yard that I can use. I have many, many vases. I love vases. And I'm interested in Asian ceramics, so a lot of Asian, Japanese, and Chinese things appear in my work too. There's generally uh, some kind of fabric thing going on. And occasionally I'll do a very decorative painting where I really concentrate on pattern and a kind of explosion of colorful objects in front of a pattern. At least once every year I do what I call a redown bouquet painting. It's basically just a bouquet of flowers in a vase with a kind of uh, vague, amorphous background. And of course, Radon was a master at this. I don't feel like I'm trying to copy 
his work, but this particular concept is something that I do like to use. It's, it, it's an, an opportunity just to concentrate on the flowers and the vase. But what you wind up doing is spending lots of time on, on like delicacies in the background anyway. So. The concept of light in the work, of course, is essential. And most of these are done in my studio with nice overhead north light. It's very silvery. And the shadows, if, when there are shadows, tend to pool around the objects uh, underneath. Uh, it's not very directional. It can be very interesting if there's like drapery or something with the light from above coming on it. And it tends to create a kind of silvery atmosphere. And there's a lot of uh, subtle tonal variation, which is something I enjoy working toward. It's a, it's a challenge, and yet I, f I feel like it does enrich the work to to try and get some of this beautiful light quality that I'm looking at. I mean, it's part of what's inspiring me. I am not necessarily trying to exaggerate the color that I see, but eventually the painting takes on a color world of its own. So that becomes as important as depicting exactly the color that I'm looking at. In his essay about Frank, Scott wrote, I've always thought of Frank as a painter's painter. By this I mean the great pleasures of his work are especially available to fellow practitioners. That is definitely the case. So I asked Frank about the technical means by which he achieves his effects. When I begin painting, I usually start on a toned ground, usually like an ochre or, or um, an umber ground. Maybe it went with a loose drawing over that, kind of getting the placement of things, uh, maybe the, the weight of something or the light a little bit. Might even rub off some of the under color like a, and sort of get a feeling for it. But then it, at a certain point, I'll, I'll zero in on it and you block in some larger areas of color. Not too different from what you might hear in painting class. It's a, build toward the details. Every painting's different and they all take on their own character, but I try to keep most of the painting moving in the beginning, not to focus too much on one thing and let the details emerge from the, the, the general impression. The medium that I use uh, combination of stand oil primarily and turpentine. It's quite simple. I don't even use a, a varnish. It's maybe a third turpentine, two thirds stand oil, and as this is exposed to the air, it gradually gets uh, thicker, and that's good for just the technical aspect of the painting, because um, you don't want to paint lean over fat. You want the oilier surface to be on top. I tend to work toward an impasto. I don't think of my impasto as wildly thick as like a Van Gogh or a, say a Lucian Freud, whose work I love and Van Gogh as well. But uh, it's natural for me to build toward that. There's so many different ways of thinking about oil, oil paint and uh, for me the, the kind of feeling like a, it's a clay-like. It can be that way and, and I, I think I tend to think of it more as that than liquidy. So that there's a little bit of resistance in the way I paint because uh, I'm going for that, that clay-like feeling, I think. I like stiff bristle brushes. In fact, I prefer stiff artificial bristle brushes. And it's, they're rarely stiff enough. I really like stiff brushes. Uh, but I, ask, I also use palette knife. I've come to use it more and more. Uh, I don't do a whole painting with it, but uh, inevitably there's just certain places where it seems to be the answer. Scott Noel wrote, what are these pleasures for a painter? I think they have to do with all the qualities intrinsic to the medium of painting itself, starting with paint's relationship to sensuality. I asked Frank, what do you hope people would experience from looking at his paintings? Is it about my philosophy, about life, about the, uh, the beauty of the world, the uh, transience of things? What I'm trying to give to people, I guess, is something of the pleasure that I'm getting out of just seeing these things. 
some kind of enjoyment of the visual world.